In this video, I'm going to show you a simple way to tell your guitar playing skill level without relying on guesswork, intuition, or just erring on the side of talking down to yourself. Watch out, I f get it right! Most importantly, you will see exactly how to tell when you are or aren't a beginner guitar player anymore, because I find far too many people don't know the difference between actually, objectively, still being a beginner and just feeling like a beginner because, you know, you're not a guitar player if you can't self-deprecate. The way I see it as a guitar teacher, you're still a beginner if any three of the following things are true for you. You're still learning how to tune your guitar. You don't know the names of the open strings. Your eyes ping pong between your left and right hands when you play a single note. You can't even bend a string, let alone bend it in tune. You don't know what a pull off is. You can't yet smoothly switch between the full C major and full G major chords. You don't know what bar chords are yet, or you struggle like hell to play them without your thumb falling off. And finally, you don't know any scales at all. And the reason why I said any three of the things on this list mean you're a beginner is because you can already be past the beginner level even if you have one or two of these little weaknesses. For example, you can still struggle to play bar chords even if you can already bend strings in tune, you know a bunch of scales and chords and you can read tab no problem. That probably means you're past the beginner level already. And the reason why it's so important to know when you're not a beginner anymore, when you're past that level, is because oftentimes we get so fixated on everything we can't yet do on guitar, everything that's still hard, that we forget to give ourselves credit for everything we've already achieved. The way I see it, nothing is harder on guitar than picking it up for the first time with no calluses on your fretting hand and of course, being certain that you're too old, you have no natural talent, your fingers are the wrong size and shape for guitar, getting past all that crap and learning to play something anyway. Because 99.9% .9 of people, guess what? They all quit before they get past the beginner level. So in my mind, it's way more impressive to go from not being able to play anything at all to getting past the beginner level than it is to go from intermediate to advanced. So how can you tell if you're an intermediate guitar player? Well, it's actually pretty simple. If you've played guitar for years but feel like you haven't improved since year one, if you're worried that you have bad habits on your playing, if you know more than one scale, if you're able to play bar chords, at least the simple ones, if you can play at least one song all the way through, if you can play a melody over a simple backing track and stay in key, if you feel like you should be a lot better than you are given the amount of time you've been playing, and if you can play faster than 300 notes per minute. If any two of the things on this list are true for you, then it's very likely you are an intermediate guitar player. And notice how I even have some negative things on there like being worried about bad habits or feeling like you should be way better than you are given the amount of time you've been playing. That's because those emotions and those thoughts only show up in somebody who is more advanced than a complete beginner. A complete beginner typically doesn't think so much about bad habits, mainly because they just don't have enough self-awareness to know when they do or don't have bad habits. Now, what about the advanced level? Well, unfortunately, this is where it gets pretty murky because once you graduate the intermediate level and you have those skills under your belt, it becomes a lot more about what is it you still want to do on guitar versus the things you can't yet do and just working on those. And of course, there's different levels levels of being advanced on guitar too. There is a just graduated intermediate level advanced, then there's Sean Lay in advanced, and then there's everybody in between. But here are the signs that I say you're well into the advanced territory. When you can pick through scales and scale sequences at 600 notes a minute or faster. When you've written your own song or guitar solo you feel reasonably happy with. And when you can transcribe at least simple classic rock level songs by ear. When you can do even one of those things, that is a big accomplishment, something to be proud of because most guitar players will never get even close to that. Now here's the bottom line. Whether you agree or disagree with what I said or you think that I left some stuff out as far as the criteria for each of the guitar playing skill levels, the important thing is to know objectively when you're not a beginner anymore. That's the most important thing because once you're past the beginner level, everything becomes much, much easier since you have so much more certainty and conviction that yeah, you really can learn guitar and developing your other skills starts to feel much, much easier. And after you're past the beginner level, I find it not really useful at all to label yourself with any certain skill level because it doesn't really matter if you are upper intermediate or lower advanced or medium advanced or whatever, because there's always going to be at that point, a lot of people who are at a higher level than you and also a lot of people at a lower level than you. And actually boxing yourself in with a certain skill level label can be quite detrimental. For example, if you think of yourself as a low level intermediate guitar player, you may shy away from doing some more advanced skills like improvising because you don't think you're ready for them. Which is not true at all because once you know even one scale and you understand how chords work, you can begin some simple improvising right then and there. You don't have to wait until you become advanced with your fretboard knowledge or your technique or any of that. And if you see yourself just as a guitar player looking to get better, it becomes so much easier to give yourself permission, if you will, to try the things you typically wait to try until you're 
quote unquote more advanced. On the flip side though, you're never too advanced to work on the so-called basics, like how you hold the pick, how you bend strings, how you do vibrato, and do a whole bunch of other things that you typically learn you know, in your first year of playing. But if you think of yourself as an advanced guitar player, it can feel somewhat ego bruising to go back to how you do vibrato, for example, and make that better, or how you hold the pick and make that better, even when you realize you've got some weaknesses in those areas. And that's just another way of how seeing yourself at a certain level can hold back your progress. And no matter what your skill level is today, if you want some help building your guitar speed, check out the link in the description of this video. Go to the page on the screen right now. I'm going to show you a free one hour masterclass called Guitar Speed Formula. What it is, is a way to practice where you don't have to start slow and gradually build speed in small increments, because you probably already know this way of practicing doesn't work anywhere near as well as everybody tells you that it does. If you want to know a different way to build speed that works a lot better and doesn't take more than 20 minutes of practice time per day, check out that link, enter your email address, I'll send you the video for free. And if you currently feel like a beginner or you want to get past the beginner level as soon as possible, watch this video right here where I'm going to give you five simple guitar technique tricks that are going to elevate your guitar playing skill level very, very quickly, possibly even by tomorrow. Watch it next.